Okay. Okay, Tiffany, welcome to the Empower Network. Hello, Amos, and um, hello to your community. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. So where would you like to begin? Because you you have so much to unpack here, and I'm going to let you take it where you want to go. Because there's what you actually do practically, and even that's morphing as a coach. <laughs> and then there's your story of everything, including, I'm just going to say this here, and then we'll get to it later, but you were living in China, um, totally cut off during covid and you the, you were having groceries delivered just like we saw in the news like no contact oh yeah <laughs> yeah so let's uh, let's, i lived that <laughs> so where should we start this story how would you like to start okay so how about let's start with what i do okay awesome okay, so i'm currently a meditation practitioner uh, I also do intuitive readings and like help people uh, clear their energies and also build positive energy within themselves. Um, so th that's what I do. I also have events where I have groups of women. Um, there are some like men and teens that come as well, um, but it's mainly women. Um, and yeah, so I throw events and then I have individuals and I also have a group community for meditation. Um, yeah, so that's what I do. Um, how I, let's see, should we start with why or how I got here? <laughs> um, well, whatever you, I just like to leave it open to you. Like, okay. I'm curious to learn more about, yeah. Why okay, so here. Um, all right, so a little bit about my story is, um, I would say that growing up, um, brave would be a good word for me. I was always questioning, not wanting to maybe getting a little bit more trouble than I needed to be because I wanted to question things. I wanted to push limits. I wanted my own limits. Um, and then, um, I, I was working many places. I was a chef and I got pregnant with my son and I realized um, a chef might not cut it for when being a single parent. And so, and I still want to travel the world. That was a big part of my story. I wanted to see everywhere. And so I was like, well, kid, you're coming with me. What could I do? So I went back to university and I became a teacher. And I was like, all right, this is good for us. I, I got a lot of knowledge in art, home economics. I could do this, teach the fun stuff um, and be with kids, be with my son and see the world. And so I did that. I left, uh, my son was six years old and we spent a year in Bangladesh. Um, wow. yeah. And then we went to Egypt. Then we went to Australia. Um, then we went to China. Uh, we ended up in Sweden. Um, but during the time in China, uh, COVID did happen, right? Happened to me, happened to you, yeah. happened to everybody. Yeah. Um, and when, what happened to the community that I was in was, and it wasn't hit by COVID, but because we were foreign, we just got locked in our homes. Okay. So, um, Right before COVID hit, my son went on a trip with my dad and he had a, he had a doctor's appointment in Canada. So we were excited. He was going to go for a trip. Then he was going to, then we would reunite. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I'm, my son's away. I'm locked in COVID or locked in China in a home for three and a half months. They would just drop off, um, drop off food and an alarm, a crazy alarm. And sometimes it would go on for eight hours or longer. This big alarm um, would go on. And I just remember my brain kind of crumbling. Like I, I was, all of a sudden I became scared. I became miserable <laughs> would be a good word for it. I don't think I'm a miserable person, but it was happening. Mm. Um, and I've never been so scared. Like there was no brave thoughts in my head. Wow. And so I thought, oh, okay, the world, something's happening. I have to, somebody has to save me. I'm going to find a country that's going to save me. I've been to a lot of countries. I'll just move. 
And so I thought maybe Sweden was the answer, right? And then I moved there and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna set myself up on a system, do these things. And all while questioning, like, okay, now I have more limitations. Now I have more limitations and more limitations. But in, back, in the back of my head, I always knew like, like people don't have to live like this. Like you think of people, um, like inspirational people like Oprah, like, like she always says like, you don't have to live like anything. You're gonna create your own reality. And like Tony Robbins, like all these amazing people that are there and they're not just saying this stuff, they're living it, right? So in the back of my head, and I would always see these children that I was teaching and be like, I wish somebody would teach them this. I wish somebody would teach them that they don't have to choose what they're going to do right now. They just need to know what they want, what they want to do. Um, hmm. Yeah. And so it eventually came to a time where I was, I almost couldn't fall asleep because I was worried about waking up the next morning because I had to live the same life over and over again. And that was, it was hard for me. Also, I'm a mom. I don't want my son to see that. Hmm. And so it came to it came to a moment where I was like, no, nobody's teaching. No, nobody's teaching these things because maybe not enough people are feeling them. And how can I teach somebody to take control of their own mind so they can live out their bravest adventures and their happiness and their true inner passions unless I could actually do it. My son's not going to believe me that he could do it if I'm not doing it. Of course not. And we're products of our environment, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's the environment that we are creating for ourselves and others, that's the life we're going to be living. Can you just hit that again, what you just said? Because you just said, my son will not believe what I'm telling him if I'm not living it. Never. My son is not going to believe that he could do whatever he wants here now in this life, yeah. unless I'm also doing it. And that's, that's not just for my son. That's for everybody's children. That's for your neighbors. That's for, that's for anybody who you're living beside. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, so mm. yeah, I decided to make the change. I'm no longer going to be teaching a curriculum that often I didn't even agree with. I was always in trouble. I wanted to be an eco-friendly art teacher. Oh, no, 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 you can't do that. You could have an eco-friendly unit. And I'm like, what? But like, this is our planet. We're supposed to be teaching these kids how to take care of it. No, 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 you're not allowed to do that. And so like, I was walking into a job every day where I didn't agree with it. I didn't love it. I didn't, it, and I felt, I'm not contributing what I can to this planet. There's all, there's something more I could be doing. There has to be something more. And somebody might say, well, that's very selfish to think that you could do something so amazing. Then call me selfish because. Sure. Yeah. This is, <laughs> if I want to live my life giving great, like that, let's, um, that's how I feel. And so yeah, I decided to pack my life up in Sweden, quit my teaching job, no more curriculums, and the curriculum is going to be my students. They're their curriculum. They need to find out who they are. And you can't do that unless you go inside yourself, hence meditation. Okay. That's how you get inside yourself, right? So then what was next? So you realize the system you're being forced to operate in, your job, you're paying your bills is, is not working because systems are always antiquated. That's why there's systems. It's because they're never current. They're always behind. So then what did you do? What breakthroughs did you have to recognize you have to go and build your own curriculum? Like you don't just do that one day and build it. Like that's a whole process. Well, I would love to say I just woke up and decided that I'm going to do it. <laughs> that is not what happened. Um, I honestly feel like I probably fought against it a little bit 
like almost like somebody should be doing this. And I remember people would like tell me, you know, somebody would pay for this, right? You know, somebody would pay for this. <laughs> and but I would like, I think I was running myself um, just so tired because I would go to school and teach. And then I would have this hobby mm. of guided readings and this hobby of teaching people things like, oh, read this book about, you know, mind training with Silva or John Asraf, all these things. These things are amazing. Do you know, like, sports stars they all do these things you know why because they work <laughs> and so it was always like this hobby and people would say you know people would pay for this right you know and so i guess that's when i decided like i don't know what i'm going to do but it's not going to be teaching a curriculum that i don't agree with and i decided and i missed my family i was gone for nine years with my son around the world and i was like you know what if I'm going to be locked somewhere on the planet, I want it to be with family. Like you met, you met Shannon, you talked to her. She's great. Who doesn't want to be around Shannon? <laughs> well, no, I've, so, never I, I've never met your sister, but we chatted online. Oh well, yeah, that, Sorry. Yeah. That's what I meant. I meant yeah. like you got to chat with her. She um, seems really cool. So you, yeah. are, do you now live with your family then? Is that where you, you've come? Yeah. Up? So when I came back to Canada, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do. I just knew I wasn't going to teach. Okay. in school system that's all i knew um and i thought that i was going to go back and be a chef because i loved my i loved being a chef i really did and so i was like well i'm probably going to do that um but then the more and more that i pushed my brain to say you're not going to teach you're not going to you're not going to do what you don't want to do you have a purpose and it's something different the more that i was meditating and the more that i realized like I'm doing what I want to do. Mm. And if I, and I do, I genuinely love people. And I wish for all of our children, no matter where they are in the world, to understand that the answer to everything and the answers to what they want to do and to live a happy life and a life of fulfillment and some, and use something that they are enthusiastic about comes from finding out who they are and what they want, their inner values, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't ask children that in schools. We don't say, what do you value? We say, what did your parents tell you to do? Yeah. How are other people acting? So this is, this is why we become these products of our environment, because we're not asked to question, and we should question. So mm -hmm. Amos, do this for me. We're not going to meditate right now. Don't worry. But I want you to close your eyes. Okay. Close your eyes. Whoever's following out there, please close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Now with your eyes closed, imagine everyone you love. Every person you love, the people that know you love them, the people that don't know you love them, imagine them. Imagine them living happy every day because they are doing what they are meant here to do. They are doing the things that keep them happy, feeling alive, enthusiastic about their own life. Okay, open your eyes. Did you hear things? Did you see things? Yeah, I saw them laughing. I saw them telling me. I saw them sh uh, doing things and, sh and just joyful. I saw them and it made me so happy to see it. Just think about if we encouraged each other to live out their live out your true purpose and what you actually value. Think about all the inventions and creations and the things that would be around everybody. Like we live in limitations on how we value ourselves, um, limitations on how much money we're worth, limitations on health on happiness all these things and if there's one thing that i know from traveling this planet limitations aren't real now i'm not talking about the laws of the universe like gravity i'm talking about the limitations that we get from our parents our grandparents our neighbors the government um our teachers if limitations if we were meant to live by limitations, then we'd be living exactly the same around the planet. And we're not. 
True. We don't live in Russia. We don't live like we do in Sweden. It, Sweden's right next to Poland and they live it totally opposite. We don't live in, a, in Panama like we do in Bangladesh. We don't, we don't live the same. So this means that our limitations are coming from somewhere. They're coming from our environment and what we are trained to believe. And the amazing thing about training means that we can be trained to do other things. Mm. And so with meditation and meditation is a beautiful thing because it's not one of those things where you start off small and then get better and better and better. There's no mastery to meditation. It's ongoing. And one of the beautifulest things I feel is if you start off meditating and get what you feel is very good at it, it's just, you're almost meditating as you're standing, walking, like walking to school or to work or in the line at the grocery store. Can it's you, just going to become natural to you. Tiffany, can you define meditation as you see it? So are you meaning manifesting are you meaning visualization like what do you specifically mean okay so there's different types of meditation right so manifestation and visualization are are huge that's kind of the where you want to get to right um meditation to start out is just calming the mind. And I don't mean going blank. We can't go blank. We're, we're, we think for a reason, right? We got brains, we got to use them. And so it's about calming the mind and asking yourself, am I happy right now? Calming the brain, getting out that noise, right? Getting out that noise from our environments and asking yourself, what am I? What do I truly desire? What do I value? What if you have a hard time doing that? What if there is a lot of, let's say, noise because you've been through stuff today, yesterday, there's pressing needs, there's legitimate concerns, there's <laughs> trauma, there's a relationship breakdown. What do you tell the person that they're like, this sounds amazing, but I don't actually know what to do because their world is in chaos even if it's just internally chaos. So Amos, remember how I said we're a product of our environment? If their environment is chaos, they need to slowly find a new environment. That's why there's groups out there. And choose a group that you're going to fit with to thrive. There's, okay, so for meditations, I wouldn't recommend anyone starting out and or just trying to get better at it to do it alone, because it's not gonna work. That's not the right environment because your environment is still filled with chaos. Mm. So the environment that you need is one where maybe other people are meditating. Join an online challenge or an online group or community where mm. other people are doing the same things. You mm. will never go against your environment. It's all, like, your environment's always gonna win. If everybody in your environment is always angry that they don't have enough money, yeah. guess what? You're going to be angry too. Can you park on that just a little bit longer? That principle, your environment is always going to win. So that's like the fish in the bowl and the water's dirty. You can try to get the dirt out of you, but the water around you is dirty. You either got to clean the water or get out of the bowl. So what have you found with people then what are necessary steps that typically have to happen? Do they have to just find a tribe to belong to, or do they have to physically move out of a place, a relationship? How do they, what, is there always a rule about what's first? Okay, so some people are not going to like this. Ooh, I'm but, excited. <laughs> I would, I would bet on it that every time, all the time, it's to take responsibility that you're in that environment and you're part of that and you're part of that creation. Mm -hmm. You need to take responsibility that you're in that environment 
and you're counting on that environment and you're if you're and you're manifesting without knowing i would say and you're you like humans are creatures of habit right so you have a habit of being in that environment and there's parts of you that maybe feel safe in that environment and it sounds kind of silly to say well somebody feels safe in uh unsafe environment or chaos but we do so the first step is to you need to take responsibility that you're there and it's you built your own reality and the only way into uh I don't want to say new reality, but a new environment is to is to move yourself. And whether that's to read a book that's going to like um, that's going to get you to the next steps, like, oh, I'm always I feel I'm in an environment that always has unhealthy relationships. So read a book about healthy relationships and how to change over. You need you need to take those steps. Um, I would say a huge step uh, for myself and many people I know was to actually that not even the first time um, meditating, but to meditate with the intention of calming yourself and bettering yourself to get better and better. So if you if you if you take take responsibility that you are where you are because you have created that environment, then you can see where you can take steps to get out of that environment. And it's not gonna happen overnight. It's not, that's why like, um, I don't know if it was only John Astroff that said this, but like how we have like two parts of our mind. One's Frankenstein, one's Einstein. You know, or like Frankenstein is there for a reason. He's supposed to protect us. But sometimes when Einstein questions, hey, I could be doing something else with my life. Frankenstein's going to be like, no, no, that sounds scary, right? Like it's not going to happen overnight. Hmm. That's why it's a process. That's why you, um, jump into a community, get a coach. Because I know that I couldn't have done it without one. And I don't want to do it without one. I want support. I, I don't feel bad to say that I needed help out of this. You know, when I was in Sweden and I was setting myself up for, okay, well, I guess here my son will have his school paid for and then I don't have to worry about his university and I could focus on retirement. It won't be a very good retirement, but it'll be a retirement. All these things going on in my head, I did need help. And the help that I needed may may or may not have been with somebody that I loved and that really wanted to protect me because they created, they helped me create the environment that I was already in, yeah. right? So I did need a little outside help. And I guess I'm going to say, look to like some people, whether they're famous or not, but look at their stories. They've always had amazing coaches behind them. They've always came from, you know what? I had to ask for help at some point because what I was doing wasn't working. I love what you're saying, Tiffany. Uh, Lance Roberts says, you have no fear, Tiffany. You are very inspiring. I, I love that you said something few minutes ago, you said you have to take responsibility for someone, because I've been there, who wants to play the victim and blame everyone else, even if everyone else has done legitimate things. I remember when I woke up, at some point in my 30s, I woke up and realized I played the victim and I was powerless because I was playing the victim. And the most powerful thing I could do was go, I somehow created this. And not to throw others under the bus or to give permission to things they've done wrong, but to go, I am solely responsible for my outcome. And so that, and I found that that was the beginning stages of being, probably taking back the power that always was mine, Tiffany, that I didn't know. So I love that you said that. Because it gives people hope. If people are in a place that they feel they're powerless, the last thing you got to tell them is you're a victim. That just dooms them 
it's like, no, you can, you have choice. I, what you said there was very powerful, Amos, um, that it took back your power to take the responsibility huh. of, wow, I'm here, whether I'm happy or not, whether I'm doing good or not, whatever I'm feeling, this responsibility, knowing that it was my responsibility to get here and to get out, that is a powerful thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's, um, and I'm sure you've been there where you've had conversations with people and you're like ready for them. It's to click, it's to like, oh, take responsibility. And it's not there yet. Um, it's, I yeah. think we've all, yeah, had times in our life where, where, okay, so we've had times in our life where we've went against what people in our environment told us to do, right? And we felt great about it. We were like, I wouldn't have changed that for the world. No, that's great. And we've had times in our lives where we wanted to do something, but we were worried about how people in, in our environment and what they valued mattered. So we didn't do it. And those are the things that we're going to be like, oh, why didn't I? Why didn't I take that opportunity? Why did? Why wasn't they brave enough? Why didn't I? you know, that would have made me feel good or peaceful or happy or whatever it is, right? Um, but it's those things, taking responsibility of your own actions and your whatever you're going to do, that is our power, right? And that's where we find out because I know by speaking to people, no matter where they are on the planet, it doesn't matter they are living lives out of like duty to society. I don't even think some people know what they actually value. It doesn't matter what age they are either. It doesn't matter what religion they're from. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. They're just following these like limitations or like what they believe they should be valuing. I had a thought about that to what you're saying, Tiffany, you know, I don't know that I know what I value and how would a person know what they value? I don't mean like, well, I like eating healthy. I mean, like deeper than that, what is my five or six or seven driving motivators in life? I happen to be going through Mel Cario's values program this weekend. So I'm excited about that, but I'm 47. I've never even dug into what do I value? People could list me 150 words and I could pick probably my favorite 20 and reduce it to what I think. But some of those answers, as you're saying, are societal because my mommy and daddy, and I still want to be a good boy. Yeah. Yes. Who, who doesn't, who wants to make their parents upset? They love their parents. And at the same time, our parents don't want to make society upset because they feel maybe that it's going to affect us right? Like when we, our parents don't want to hurt us for the most part, and we don't want to hurt our parents, but all these, like give our parents a break. They probably don't even know what they value because their values came from somewhere. Right. Yeah. They were, they, they had stuff forced on them based on where the, the grandparents were, where society was, was there a war going on? Was there ample food and provision? Was there, who knows what was on the planet? And so they just try to do their best and do what they thought was right and raise a bunch of kids or raise one kid. And then now we show up and we're like, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, we got to give our parents a break and our grandparents. <laughs> um, Sounds like we got to give ourselves a break too, because when you realize, like I have, like, that you don't really know that you know what you value. You thought, you think you do, but when it really comes down to it, how do you know the inner programming if you've never gone through a process that unveils it and takes off the noise, as you say, the noise? Well, I don't, think you, I don't think you do. I think you need that process. I think you need to sit with yourself and go inside yourself to ask yourself, and like the answers are there. The answers are always there. And I'm not saying that 
you're going to sit with yourself once and think of a value that you honestly value that's maybe not coming from your environment, but it's really coming from self, that doesn't mean it's going to stay there forever, right? We change, we learn, we grow. So it's important for us to, at different times in our life, say, well, what are my priorities now? What am, what are my, my strongest values now? Um, so, but I don't, I don't have an answer for if people don't know and people are looking for it other than it starts with them because nobody's going to know what you value. Somebody could tell you what you should, but they don't know what you value. The only person that knows is you once you have taken the time to sit with yourself. Um, breath work, I think, is amazing for this. Um, what does breath work do? Like, I'm sorry, I, but I'm just being honest. I have no idea what breath work does. Someone told me today, make sure you're breathing. I'm like, in the last year, recognizing, yeah, sometimes I'm not breathing deeply. That's probably not a good thing. But what the heck is breath work? Okay, so breath work is something that can, it, it's what you do. Um, and you could bring oxygen inside your body. The more oxygen you have, the better you feel, right? Um, so breath work, so, sorry, somebody's just waving out the window. <laughs> they distracted me, sorry. Um, so breath work to me is a time to sit with yourself and actually hold you. You could, there's so many different ways of breath work, but you can take a deep breath in and hold it for as long as you can. And then you're breathing out for even longer than you breathe it in. And then you're holding. And in those holds, what happens to like the inside of you is you're feeling your you're feeling more calm, relaxed. And that's when your brain can actually help you answer the questions that you want, right? You're so, not going to answer the questions that you have with everything spinning around. So does it help get you into that place where you can receive or solve or discover? Is that what it does? Yes. So it calms you among other things and allows you to reflect. That's probably the wrong term, but is that kind of correct? I would say so. I, I would say that meditation is not going to be the same for me and my breath work. I might come out with different feelings than you will, just like the next person. That's why it's not, um, I do believe that everybody should be meditating but it's not a one size fit all. Yeah. It's not what's going to, meditation has so many benefits, health benefits, um, emotional benefits. Um, the list goes on and on, sleeping benefits, everything. Um, and it helps you remember things like all these things, but the breath work that, um, the breath work and getting into yourself, it's, yeah. I. It's not a one, one time, um, it's not a one time fits all or a one size fits all for everyone. Okay. I think this might be your mama, Terry Roberts. Is that your mama or no? Oh, <laughs> there's my mom. Yeah. Hey, awesome. She says, uh, Tiffany is one brave and independent woman. I love her. I'm so proud to be her mama. Wow. What words. Thanks, mom. <laughs> I'm learning so much from her. I love that Tiffany makes me question myself. And uh, Melissa, it says helps to release then receive what a gift that you know for your mom to tell you that you inspire her to question herself what a gift you can give your parent because your parent they gave you life and now you're giving them life it's it's an amazing bond that we have with um with our family right um i love you mom <laughs> um one you know back to one thing about um like I guess one reason about like starting this journey is I remember in Sweden I just was like okay 
to my son. Like we're very, like we're very close. It's just been me and him traveling, doing our own thing. And I just remember being like, okay, well, you know what? Sweden really wasn't the answer. I didn't, I came here because I was scared. This wasn't for us. And then I was like, okay, so let's go home. Like we're going to be stuck somewhere. Let's go with family. And I remember my son just saying, mom, you got this. Just whatever you do, stop teaching. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> he was like, he's like, you're not happy. And then he said to me, the one thing I will never forget. He goes, I don't even care for poor mom. I just want you to be happy. And he was 14. And I was like, well, I'm always going to take care of us. There's always going to be food on the table, honey. And he goes, mom, we're okay. He said, just, just be happy. And I remember thinking like, that made me question, am I showing him enough happiness? Is this, is this fair? Right. Um, so yeah, it's an amazing thing. Um, the bonds between our families and, but we should question because let me ask you this. If you had to, if you had to live by what all your teachers, your parents, uh, the government, uh, your teachers, your doctors, your neighbors, whoever it was, if you had to live by everything that they thought or were teaching you, do you think you want to do that? No, not, yeah. a, not a chance. Yeah, but like most people would say, I would change a few things. It doesn't mean it's not taking anything away from our teachers, our parents, whoever we feel is looking after us and teaching us. But we would change things and, and we should. And we should be encouraged to question. It doesn't like... You hear people say, oh, my legacy are my children. No, they're not. That's not your legacy. Your children aren't you. Your children can learn from you. And they could go on and to do amazing things, their own things. Wow. They're, not, they're not yours to say that. You should be creating your own, right? But you can't do that unless you know what you actually value, what your contribution to your life here now to society, the planet, where, however you want to call it, you need to figure out what you actually value. What are your inner values? And then what are you enthusiastic about and run with it? Because that should be your contribution. That should be your legacy. I love that you said that because, and I love that you said that about your son. I wonder if it's both going hand in hand. It's like, what lights you up? Make sure you spend most of your time doing things that lights you up. And on the other hand, are you making your interactions with others, whether they're family or not, are you ensuring it's fun for them so that we're not being a drain on people? So if we do just do both those things, found out what matters most and spent most of our life doing things that lit us up, we would be glowing on the planet. And if we <laughs> always ensured that in every interaction, we're, we're ensuring it's fun for others. We're looking out for them too. Wow, that would be powerful, Tiffany. Yeah, and like everybody could, you know, be that Einstein, right? Hmm. It's... Can we talk about how people should connect with you? I, I'm going to be tagging you in this and you've delivered so much value. You've also just been, this has been healing for me today. So I want to say from my heart, thank you. I really needed this today. And I'm sure others watching, really, when they watch, they'll, they're going to get a lot of stuff from this. So I want to make sure people connect with you. So how would you like them to connect with you? Um, well, first, thank you for letting me be here um, in your community today, Amos. And thank you to anyone who's watching and or watches the replay. Um, so to connect with me, I am on Facebook, um, Tiffany Roberts. And I'm also on Facebook uh, for Intuitive Energy Academy. So I do have, um, I think, a connection to Wildflower Readings, which I also have, but I'm trying to move it all into one community. So if you see the Wildflower Readings, try to go into the Intuitive Energy Academy and it's under Tiffany Roberts, um, Brave Peaceful Lioness, because that's, that's a little bit about who I am. I want to be brave. I'm pretty peaceful. 
and I want to go after things, right? So I want to have a little mixture of both. Um, so yeah, um, on Facebook mostly. I also have, um, you'll see that this Saturday, I have a masterclass. So anybody who wants to follow that, that's great. And um, of course, they could join me in the meditation community. Me and my family, we put out free Monday meditations every Monday live. And then I have some other groups and communities that people could join as well. So, Fun. Yeah. Fun. Or they could email me intuitiveenergyacademy at gmail.com. Yeah. And it gives links to everything. Um, well, I want to thank you for being here, Tiffany. This was tremendous. Thanks for having me. I need to add, um, Autumn, it says Autumn Roberts. Is that? Yeah, it's for some reason it won't change. I've changed the name. I don't know how many times. <laughs> it just won't change. I don't know. I got to figure it out. <laughs> it's, alias. it's alias. It's fun. <laughs> if you have been watching the Empower Network, you've been watching Tiffany Roberts uh, deliver a very heartfelt and empowering message to make sure that you know and find out or find someone to help you find out what you deeply value, not what your parents or society or even well-meaning whatever tried to put on you because they could have to have the same thing happen to them. She's been encouraging you to find out what you value. Make sure you stay in that fun play zone of your creative genius. And at the same time, make sure that in all your transactions, you're ensuring that your others are really having fun when they play with you. That is yeah. a beautiful <laughs> blend. That's a beautiful blend. I'm going to take yeah, that. Life is supposed to be fun. We're like, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Tiffany, for being here. I hope you have an amazing day. Anyone who's watching this, thank you so much for watching and being in the Empower Network. And Tiffany, I'll message you after this. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. Bye for now, Amos. Bye, everyone.